Hey guys, today we'll cover the bevel tool. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start a new file. So go up to your file menu option and pick new general. No need to save the file you're working on. And we'll start as usual with our default cube. Go ahead and roll your mouse wheel forward to zoom in. Then press tab to switch to edit mode. And let's drag out this tool set. So hover over the right side of the tools, click, hold down and drag it to the right until we see the names of the tools again. And in this lesson, let's talk about the bevel tool. Now first, go ahead and click once in space to deselect everything. Then press one on your keyboard, not your number pad, but on the regular keyboard. Then hover your cursor over this top corner vertex and click on it to pick the vertex. Then with the bevel tool, we can affect a single vertex, but it's a tool where we might wanna tell Blender that we want to affect only this vertex before we try to use it. And in the case of many tools in Blender, we haven't looked at this yet, but there's often a little extra information that will pop up here when you've selected the tool. And this information is just beneath the edit mode tab and these other menu items. For the bevel tool, the key here is that it's defaulting to edges. So even though I have vertex selection mode turned on and I've only picked one vertex, it wants to affect edges by default. So click where it says edges to drop that down and pick vertices instead. Now hover over that little yellow handle and click and hold down on the circular part and drag your cursor in towards the middle of this cube and you'll see something is happening here where the bevel is triangular. So go ahead and drag in just a little bit, something like I have here and let go. Now, as soon as you're done, you'll see the adjust last operation panel. Go ahead and click on that. It'll say bevel down there and you'll have a few different things you can do. The main things I want to call your attention to for now, width, that's what we just did. So if you click and hold down and drag left or right, you're just adjusting that initial bevel width. So you can let go of that. Segments, go ahead and click and hold down on segments. Because we only had one segment, it's just a flat triangle. But notice if you start to drag to the right, all of a sudden you get many more segments, which means that you can have a much more rounded or smooth beveled corner there. I'll orbit a little bit so we can see the angled view and zoom in a bit so we can see it a little better. You'll also notice the shape. So go ahead and click and hold down. If you drag that shape to the right, it'll become a little bit more pointy and kind of pointing out in a way. If you drag it to the left, it will actually concave in and can come all the way in depending on how far you push that. So you can have kind of a carving out or you can have it kind of rounding over at the corner. And then of course you could come back and adjust the segments or the width and kind of play around with these relative to one another to get some sort of interesting corner bevel going on. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here, and for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube, and this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now back to the lesson. Now let's contrast this to how the bevel tool would work if we were using it on an edge. So let's undo back control Z to before we did the bevel. Then press the number two on the top row of numbers on your keyboard and click on this edge near you to select it. Now we'll have to change the bevel tool to affect edges instead of vertices. So where this drop down menu says vertices, go ahead and click on it and switch it back to edges. And then 
hover over the yellow circular handle here, click and hold down and drag it in towards the shape, and you'll notice that you're beveling it again. Let go, and your Adjust Last Operations panel, if you had left it open last time, it'll default to open like mine. If it's closed down at the bottom, you just click on the name bevel and it'll pop up. And once again, you can click and drag on the segments and you'll see that you can drag them up such that you have a rounded corner. I'll orbit around so we can see this a bit better. And we can play again with the shape. We could drag it in and it'll be rounded in. We could drag it out and it'll be a little sharper of a corner. Okay, so we can bevel a single vertex. We can bevel a single edge. What if we want to bevel multiple edges or vertices together? Let's try that. So control Z to undo back. Let's say, I'm going to roll the mouse wheel out to zoom out a bit. Let's say we want to get all four edges on this side, on this face here. We want to bevel them all together. Well, we could select the face and then Blender will know that all the edges attached to that face are what we'll need to bevel. So let's try that. Let's, let's press the number three on that top row of numbers on your keyboard. Click once on this face here to select it. The bevel tool, if it's defaulting to edges, that'll work great. Go ahead and hover over this circular handle, click and drag it inwards. And eventually you'll see that you have that flat default bevel. Go ahead and let go. Then in your adjust last operation panel, you can adjust the segments and all the same tools apply. So you can play around with the shape and the segments until you have something you like there. And that got all of those edges together and it left the rest untouched. Now, if you didn't need all of the edges, you just wanted certain ones to bevel. Let's undo back control Z then click once in space to deselect everything. Press the two key on that top row of numbers on your keyboard. And then let's select these three edges. Click once on this edge, hold down shift, click once on this edge, and with shift held down, click on this edge. So let's say we only were worried about these three. You just pre-select them as we've done and then use the tool as we've been doing. So click and hold down and drag this in until you get your bevel started. And then in the adjust last operation panel, you can play around again with adjusting those settings. Now, two more things to note. Let's undo back a step, control Z. If we want the entire object to be beveled, every last vertex and edge on it, then we'll need to select all of the object or all of the faces in the object. Remember to do that. First, we'll want to press three on the top row of number keys. And then we'll want to switch to a wireframe view. So come up to the top right and click on the viewport shading for wireframe. Make sure that X-ray toggles on. And then click and drag a selection window around everything. Then you can come back and switch solid shading back on. And so long as you're in your bevel tool, and you have the edges as pre-selected for being what you want to affect here, then you can click and drag this in until you see that bevel working. And then again, you can adjust the segments and the shape and get that all working how you intended. Okay, the last thing I want to show, Control Z to undo back, click once in space to deselect everything, then let's bevel just this top edge here. So press two on your keyboard, click once on the top edge to select it. We have the edges as the default now for the bevel tool, so that's good. Go ahead and click and drag this in towards the middle of the shape until you get a bevel going there and then let go. Now I want you to drag the segments up a bit. So click and hold down on the one for segments and drag it up a bit. I've dragged it up to 15, something around 10 or greater is good. Don't make it too much. That should be fine for now. Now, right now, the shape that's being used here, if we adjust the shape here, that's just the amount that it's bowing in or out relative to the segments and width that you've chosen. 
But it's also based off of the fact, if you look at the bottom of this whole menu, we're not going to cover every part and piece here. Some of these things are a little more advanced and we'll get to them in future lessons if we need to. But one thing that is important to note right now is you see at the very bottom, it says profile type and it says super ellipse. So by default, we're using the super ellipse profile type. Try clicking custom. Once you click custom, you have this new bit of the menu that pops down across the bottom and it says preset here. And you see this is actually a picture of what the side profile would look like. And you can see right here, it's just this diagonal, which is why this now became a diagonal again. But try this, click where it says preset and go down to crown molding and click on it. And you'll notice now that this shape here has changed. The profile that you see here has changed. And that profile is now what is determining how this bevel works on our shape and blender. Now you can click around in here to affect either one of these preset profiles, like the crown molding that we just picked, or just the default one, you could click around and just adjust it to whatever you like. But let's see how we can affect this one here. So one thing you can do is you can click and hold down on one of these little white boxes. You can click and hold down and drag it and then let go. And you'll notice it actually changes live there in the blender model, how that's being beveled. If you click anywhere along the black edge, you'll create a new little white box, which allows you to now click and drag it and adjust it. So you could play around with clicking and dragging the existing white boxes or clicking on a new spot. And if you click on a new spot, click and hold down and drag and then let go, you add the box and move it all in one fell swoop. And you'll notice how that's adjusting on your shape here. Now you notice here that it seems more curvy and here it's really kind of angular. That's just back to the number of segments. So if you click and drag the number of segments to the right, Notice that everything becomes a little more curvy in here. And then you could, of course, drag it back to the left and it'll become much more crude, much more angular. You could click where it says preset and go to something else like steps and you'll see that it carves steps in there. And again, you could just move some of this stuff around if you didn't like how the beginning of the step started or you wanted to adjust some things. So just something to be aware of. When you're new to Blender, often you'll just want to use the Super Ellipse. So I'll click back on Super Ellipse and you'll want to learn how to adjust that appropriately. Now, one last thing that I will point out now, the Bevel tool is a really incredible tool for, as we've seen, beveling edges and vertices. When you have much more complicated geometry and you need to bevel many, many, many edges across a much more complicated piece of geometry, there will be another way to bevel using an entirely different thing in Blender called modifiers. And we will cover that in a future lesson. So if the bevel tool feels like it might be a little difficult to use in more complex situations, don't worry, there are other features in Blender that will help us handle that. But when it comes to beveling an edge here and there, a vertex here and there, or even in this case, a simple cube getting all of the sides of a cube, then the bevel tool can work really well. So I encourage you to go ahead and play now with the bevel tool, experiment on what it will do with different shapes. You could perhaps delete this mesh and add a new mesh and try it out on different types of faces, different combinations of vertices and edges, and just play around with all of the different elements until you have a pretty good idea of how the bevel tool works. And once you do, you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.